Well, you know, it's uh, it's tough because uh, as an offensive coach, you want to try to add some new things that fit what you're uh, going against, up against against Miami. They're a different style of defense, so that calls for some different style of plays. But uh, being in a short week, uh, we want to also make sure these guys know what to do so they can play fast. Um, so that's a big, that's the biggest thing is trying to find that balance between being uh, a little bit different, but uh, also uh, challenging our guys and make sure they can play fast. And then how pleased are you with just the, the two game start here when you're close to averaging 30 points a game? I think it's the highest two game start for this franchise in 20 years. But uh, just how pleased are you with, with how, what you guys are able to do right now? Yeah, I think there's room for improvement. I'm obviously the one thing I'm most pleased about is the effort these guys play with. Um, and they play physical uh, everywhere. The receivers have done a great job in the running game. I mentioned that week one. Um, and it's uh, and they're very unselfish. Uh, so far, so good. That is. Uh, we're spreading the wealth around. Uh, a lot of people are touching it, and uh, I think uh, the players are genuinely happy when uh, we have success, and it doesn't have to be an individual person for them to feel that way. So they play hard. They're unselfish. Uh, they're playing smart right now. So uh, I think there's a great upside because of that um, for this season. But uh, we got a long way to go. We're going to have a different challenge every week, like you mentioned. Uh, everybody poses a different challenge with great personnel, great coaches. So uh, we got to be on our stuff and continue to play well together. Thanks, Mark. Let's go over to John Reed and then Osher. And Mark kind of answered my question there, Coach. But um, red zone, spreading the, the web around in the red zone, how much has that helped with your play calling? Because you, you, you've you gone down seven times and you've scored six out of the seven, which is, you know, what yeah. do you attribute that to with so much um, different weapons or what? Yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. I think protection's been outstanding when we get down there. We had a, you know, we had a hot route, free unblocked player that uh, Gardner recognized. He lofted up a perfect pass to Chris Thompson, uh, who, who, you know, any that, that ball could have been thrown not many places. It was a perfectly thrown ball, and Chris went up and got it, made a big play. So that's that's part of the red zone, tight window throws, guys making plays. Uh, that's a major part of it. Right now we're doing that. And like I said, we're going to see different coverages, more drop baits, more man-to-man, tight man-to-man, different leverages, and how we uh, can – attack those type of defense will be how good we do. But uh, obviously the red zone start uh, has been very good, um, but uh, it's only two games in. Thanks, Jay Reed. Let's go over to Osher and then d -Rock. Hey, Coach. Uh, how much did LaVisca stand out to you during the draft process? And uh, is it fun game planning with him? Because it sort of looks like fun. Yeah, it is fun. You know, he's a, he's a great kid, number one. Uh, he works his tail off and he likes the – attention he likes the uh ability to move around you know being a young player uh we can't put too much on his plate right now i still want him to play fast and and still uh learn the nuances of being a wide receiver very good receiver first but to just sprinkle in a few plays with him in the backfield and uh doing some different things with him i know he enjoys it and he's good at it i mean uh the one thing the rare thing for him is running between the tackles i mean he ran over a guy last week and uh, he's a physical runner with the ball in his hands, but uh, he's a valuable part of our offense. We just can't put too much on him because uh, we want to keep him around for 16 weeks and many, many years after this. So, uh, But he's a pleasure to work with. He's a great kid, works hard, and uh, loves loves football. Thanks, Osh. Let's go D-Rack and then Jamal. Hey, Coach, what what do you like about what you're getting out of O'Shaughnessy and Eifert? And are those guys kind of pretty much interchangeable for you at this point? They are. They are. They're very similar in the way they play. Uh, you know, I, I think they're both very smart, which is uh, critical for tight end play in the National Football League. You got to be smart because there's uh, so many things we do in the running game, motions, uh, formations, uh, and then in the passing game, you got to know all the run concepts, how to block the down blocks. I mean, where are you going up to? And and then uh, obviously the pass concepts, there, there are a lot of them. So they got a lot to learn. So uh, both of them are very intelligent. They know what we're looking for in each individual route. So James run a great choice route. Tyler ran a great seam ball right down the middle of the field, red cover two man, and, and broke it right down the middle, made a great catch. So uh, their versatility is key, and uh, they both can do a lot of things that can help us out. Gardner's touchdown pass to Chris Thompson you mentioned before. That looks like an incredibly difficult throw to make. Um, how hard is that throw, especially when you get someone coming at you in your face like he did? Yeah, I think it was Clowney is all. Just uh, just throw it. We're not going to block Clowney on this play. Just throw a perfect pass to Chris Thompson in the corner of the end zone. Yeah, that's 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 easy. Uh, you know, I think just having a trust that uh, Chris would go get it. You know, he hadn't known Chris for very long, but uh, uh, he knew the coverage. He knew that he had a chance, uh, a, a window of opportunity there to loft it in the corner of the end zone, and and he did that. That's uh, a skilled throw right there, a gutsy throw, and 
and obviously Chris had to beat the the linebacker that was covering him. So on both sides of it, both ends of it, it was a great play by both of them. Thanks. Thanks, D-Rock. Let's go Jamal Cassidy, Gene. Hey, Coach. Uh, the offense has kind of found its groove later in games. After getting off to a slow start in those first two games, do you alter the game script coming into this one or even alter just the, or talk to the offense about how they approach those early drives? Yeah, a little bit. I think the first week we had that critical uh, face mask penalty, which wasn't a face mask call. It was a 15-yarder. knocked us out of our first drive. Uh, last week we had the uh, unfortunate tipped ball that uh, Colin thought it was to him, and he uh, put his hands up. You know, he's not many times have I had to worry about a receiver tipping balls as a corner route, but Colin's six foot six. I didn't uh, prepare for that. Uh, so those are two drives that stopped us right there. And then uh, obviously the sack that we took was another big one. But uh, I think overall we just got to stick with our plan, um, what we want to do. I don't really adhere a whole – I don't really uh, change a whole lot. Um, we do have a lot of ways to go after defense. Uh, but the key, I think the reason why we've had success for the first two weeks is our third down percentage. Uh, keeping drives alive you know if you if you miss on four or five of those third down plays you're talking about averaging probably 13 or 14 points a game as opposed to what we're doing so uh, the third down has been impressive Gardner's done a great job on third down the receivers tight ends and linemen picking up all the different blitzes that's been the most impressive part of our game so far to me as a coach uh, but that's something that has to continue because uh, you won't get those opportunities to do a lot of different things with LaVisca and the things that we talk about unless you're converting on third down and one more for me, Coach. You got so many receivers that with talent. Does that almost make your job a little bit harder trying to make sure that you get all these guys an opportunity to get some touches? Yeah, no, it's actually great, man. I think uh, this is a conceptually based offense, really, and uh, coverage dictates where the ball goes a lot of times. And it's nice to know that if it goes to your third or fourth progression, it's a heck of a player getting it, you know. And and, and zone coverage and man coverage will have our uh, obviously our premier matchups that we don't want to work, but uh, for the most part. We like to spread the ball around. You have to, I think, uh, this day and age. It's hard to single out one guy unless he's a, you know, just a super, super, superstar. Uh, but defense can take him away. You know, they can bring a safety down and double him. They can do a lot of different things to him. Uh, so it's important for everybody else to get involved uh, in zone coverages, uh, finding the holes in the zone, different players doing it. So uh, all the guys show a skill set that they can do it. Um, and it's good to see that they're all producing when their number's called. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Jamal. Let's do three final questions for Coach Green. Let's go Cassidy, Gene, and then we'll finish with Shipley. Hey, Coach. 350-plus uh, yards put up on Miami by the Patriots in week one, over 500 on Sunday. What do you see there in their defense that you can take advantage of? Well, there's some big plays that were uh, given up. I think uh, they'll, they'll address those things. Um, you know, obviously, Buffalo, uh, Allen made, made a couple good plays with the legs, scrambling and find some people. Um, they broke coverage a couple times, uh, unfortunately, but I'm sure they'll, they have good coaches over there. They'll get all that stuff fixed up. Uh, but I think when it comes to Miami, I think you're going to see a lot of man to man and, uh, that's what we're gonna have to beat, uh, for the most part. So, uh, they got some good skill over there. Um, obviously, uh, so, and, and they're Owen too, they're going to be looking for a big time win, uh, to get off the snide a little bit. So it's going to be a great challenge for us again, like all these games are. I mean, every week you have a different challenge and a different style of defense that you have to play and attack and, and work towards. Uh, and it's never easy, that's for sure. Thanks so much. Thank you, Cassidy. Let's go Gene and Shipley. Hey, Jay. Um, early on, Gardner looked like he made a uh, little bit of a uh, couple suspect decisions. I was just curious, on the deep ball to Chark, even though Chark leaped up and got, and got, the, and got the ball, uh, were you a little bit uh, leery when, when Gardner released that ball? Because it looked like Jonathan Joseph didn't really pay much attention to the ball, but Chark uses as athleticism. Did you think that that was the right place for him to go with the ball at that moment? Uh, you know what? We took a shot with DJ on that one. They 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 played a coverage that uh, we talked about. They played a lot last year. They didn't play it in their first game, uh, but we tried to prepare for it. And, uh, you know, both corners were really soft. But I think whenever DJ has position on a defensive back, I know Gardner has a ton of confidence that he can put the ball out there and DJ at least. Worst case scenario, it'll be incomplete. Uh, obviously, best case scenario, we get the completion or a PI. So he has a lot of faith in DJ. Uh, some of those throws in a double coverage, obviously, you don't want to see. But uh, when it comes to a chance for 50-50 ball with DJ, I know that uh, Gardner is going to give him some opportunities. And, and that's what he did. So I have no fault with that whatsoever. Uh, what, uh, follow up. Uh, could you just talk about Gardner's propensity to come back after sometimes some very questionable decisions? He had a chance to get picked twice 
in this game more than he actually did. And he and right after those instances, he would come back and make a terrific throw. Did you talk yeah, about he's his one ability of the, to do yeah, that? Yeah, he's great at forgetting the last play, that's for sure. He does not let one bad play affect his next play, and that's critical for the quarterback. Uh, you cannot uh, uh, feel sorry for yourself or start thinking negatively about the next play coming up. you got to let it go and move on to the next play and attack it as its own entity like it is. Uh, and he's great at that. I'll tell you what, he has – he. No guilty uh, feelings for him now. He's going to come out and he's going to attack and and continue to do what he's supposed to do. Um, quarterbacks are going to make poor decisions from time to time and poor throws. Uh, that's just the nature of the business. It's a tough game to play. And uh, he does a great job of not let one play affect his next. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Gene. Let's wrap up with Shipley. Hey, Coach. I know a lot of the focus of the running game has been James Robinson, but how impressed have you been by the Lions run blocking through two games, especially the second half on Sunday when they were without a lender for most of the half? Yeah, I think uh, Tyler came in and did a great job, and that's important. I think I mentioned it before, uh, you know, right after training camp. Uh, my reason for optimism offensively was our offensive line play, and they're, they're well coached. Uh, Coach Warhop does a great job with those guys, and, and they're dialed in. And all of them like football. I mean, you can tell they practice and they concentrate and, and they like the physicality of it. And, and it's important for me to continue to feed them uh, somehow, you know, in the running game because they like to get out of their stance and, and play a uh, physical brand of football. So uh, it's my job to make sure we keep that mentality, that identity up, uh, and that'll open up everything else, the play action passes, the quick games and all that. So I've uh, been impressed with the offensive line. Um, I know that they're young and uh, they're developing still, but uh, very talented and uh, very good to work with. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks, Shipley, and thanks, Coach Gruden. We appreciate the time.